Hello everyone, it's Moon from Japan Life Entertainment. So today I'm going to react to the video called How Expensive Is It to Travel in Japan by Abroad in Japan? This video is a great resource letting you know about the budget ranges in Japan that makes your travel more comfortable while you're visitation. And also, I would like to comment additional tips from Japanese perspective. Okay, let's hit it. I think to many people, the words budget and Japan seem to be something of a contradiction. There's this assumption that the cost of visiting Japan for a two week holiday would be enough to bankrupt a dictator. But it doesn't have to. In the last few years, Japan has experienced a boom in tourism from 8 million overseas tourists in 2007 to 24 million last year. And with it, it's led to a whole new wave of hostels and hotels, rail passes, buses, and low cost domestic airlines that have made it cheaper to experience and travel the country than ever before. Ah. In fact, this year in the UK, Tokyo was ranked as the cheapest the nice destination stickers. thanks to a fall in the value of the yen. In this video, we'll be looking at ways that you can save money on transportation, accommodation, and dining out, and giving you a general idea of how much you could be spending on any given day. The boom like of tourism has seen an explosion of new hostels and hotels opening across Japan, especially in Tokyo. But whether you're staying at a hotel, motel, or holiday inn, the cheapest place to stay in Tokyo is the area of Asakusa and Ueno, uh, where the majority mm. of the hostels are. Stop. So the as he explained in this video, Ueno and Asakusa have budgets for a place to stay. But it is pretty far from central areas like Shibuya or Shinjuku. There are many all-night rounders in Shibuya or Shinjuku, but less Ueno and Asakusa areas. So, if you want to spend enjoyable nightlife, we suggest taking hotels close to where you want to enjoy at the end of the day. Otherwise, you missed the last train and ended up spending a lot of money for taking taxi. But don't be scared. There are cheap hotels in Shibuya and Shinjuku areas too, so it is the best way to choose your hotels for your purpose. So the absolute cheapest option, accommodation wise, is staying in a hostel in a dormitory where you can find a bed for as little sometimes as 2,000 yen. If I'm travelling in a group, that's usually the option we go for. The second best option is staying in a capsule hotel, which is a bit more ah, expensive, between 3 nice to 5,000 yen per night. If I had to choose between a hostel and a capsule hotel, I would usually go for a capsule hotel just because the beds are bigger, there's some degree of privacy with the shutter, and you get your own TV. What more could you want? After capsule hotels, the next cheapest stop. Okay, I want to add one thing. Basically, the capsule hotels have public baths and showers, so you can relax and get rid of the tiredness from the long trip. And also, the accommodation place is separated by the gender for the ladies, so you can stay there without having any anxieties. And of course, you can access with the Wi Fi too. I strongly recommend this place for the people who want to save the accommodation fee. After capsule hotels, the next cheapest option is to stay at a business hotel where you can find uh, a single room for about 5,000 yen per night if you're lucky, but typically between 5 to 7,000 yen. I could recommend some budget hotel chains like Toyoku Inn or APA Hotels, but actually I found over the last year the best way is to just go online and compare prices for about half an hour. The three That's best true. websites are probably booking.com, japanican.com and Rakuten Travel and Hostel World if you're booking a hostel. You can find bargains on Airbnb as well, especially if you're traveling in a group of like three or four people. But if you're traveling solo, I tend to find Airbnb works out to be more expensive and I use it more for the experience of staying somewhere interesting rather than to travel so, on budget. General hotels in Japan are business hotels. Basically, you can stay there 70,000 yen for a night, but the hotels located in central Tokyo, you need to pay more than 10,000 yen. Please note that high seasons cost a bit higher than ordinal prices and high seasons are generally two kinds of it. The one is like around the end of March to early May for cherry blossom season. The other is between middle of November to the end of December for red leaf season. You have to pay 1.5 times more than regular prices. Furthermore, Airbnb is a useful booking website for you to stay at the Japanese style hotels regardless of the price. Finally, the wild card option is to stay in a love hotel where you can find a room for about 8,000 yen per night on average. Although with a love That's hotel, nice. you're paying for the room rather than the people in it. So if you're going with two people, then uh, it still works out cheaper than a standard hotel room. And it's typically a lot bigger than a standard hotel room with things like cages, teddy bear <laughs> caves, and jacuzzis at your disposal. Yeah, love hotels are interesting choice. This is not the original type of hotels you can just imagine. Instead, that 
word itself describes for men and women thing. I hope you get the what I mean. You can play karaoke and play other games for free, and you can also have free food there too. Jacuzzi is at your disposal. Try and book all of your accommodation at least three months in advance、uh, to save quite a bit of money. And also for hostels, it's kind of essential given that they are still a bit of a rarity.、Uh, so try and book them all three months in advance to not only get a room, but to get one. Okay, stop.、Well. This is pretty much average expenses, and it could go 1.5 times higher in urban areas like Tokyo and Osaka. And keep that in your mind that seasonal fee would include in additional expenses before booking. And the last option, and one that I use a heck of a lot,、uh, are overnight buses, which leads us on to transportation. Yeah. Oh, cool insert. Japan's transportation infrastructure is legendary. Riding on trains is an effortless joy. They're never late. They're always clean, and passengers aren't shouting down the phone about how drunk they were last weekend with their friends Barry and Deborah. <laughs> Yeah, but there's some drunk people like this in Japanese trains too. You might see them if you get in the train around 12 midnight or 5 in the morning. But it is a little bit pricey, especially the bullet trains. And the first conundrum most foreign travellers have when coming here is whether or not to get the Japan Rail Pass. Where for about 46,000 yen, you can travel the country freely for two weeks on Shinkansen and local trains, and save quite a bit of money and have peace of mind along the way. To give you an idea of how much you could save, if you came to Japan for a two-week trip, visiting Tokyo, Kyoto, and Hiroshima, the cost of catching bullet trains on a round trip would be around 43,000 yen. If you take into consideration other costs such as subway trains, buses, that'd likely add up to another 10,000 yen.、Mm. At the minimum, you're saving about 6,000 yen, but probably more. And more importantly, it will save you the time and stress of standing around at ticket machines、yeah. every day for two weeks, buying train、It's、tickets, and bus tickets.、Yeah. And that alone is a good enough reason to consider it. However, there is an、It's、even cheaper. Japan Rail Pass is one of the smartest ways to utilize. But let me provide how Japanese people find cheaper ways to buy the tickets, which is ticket shop. For example, a round trip between Tokyo and Osaka it could save 2,000 yen. After you purchase the tickets, insert the tickets into the ticket vending machine and set up your schedule and the seats. These shops are usually located near stations. It pops up on Google Map too. We highly recommend using it. But it's cash only. Be careful with that. However, there is an even cheaper way of traveling the country.、Uh, some friends recently visited, and we traveled the same route、uh, from Tokyo to Kyoto and Hiroshima. Instead of using three bullet trains on the round trip, we used two night buses and a domestic flight from Hiroshima back to Tokyo. On top of that, we probably spent another ten thousand yen traveling around the cities on the subway trains. That gave us a total of thirty-four thousand yen, which is quite a bit cheaper. <laughs> Than getting the Japan Rail Pass. If you're、mm. traveling Japan on a budget, let night buses be your secret weapon because, as well as being half the price of a bullet train, if you travel through the night, you're also saving on accommodation、mm. as well. For example, we traveled on the night bus for two nights and thus saved two nights of accommodation, which would have been around another eight thousand yen.、Mm. That said, if you are traveling by night bus, there are a few additional costs. For example, you'll need to spend at least another six hundred yen. On a bottle of wine to make sure you're fully knocked out for the duration of the trip. I'd say 50% of the time I'm able to sleep on the night bus, and the other、yeah. 50% of the time I arrive at my destination a broken man, cursing the day that buses were ever invented. The two best websites for booking are Willa、mm. Express and JapanTravelBus.com,、uh, which are both in English and are nice and easy to use. In recent years, though, Japan has、okay, so、also seen. The night bus really saves and very cheap for long distance transportation. Some buses have toilets and three seat buses, pretty comfy like business class. I also had a few experiences of riding this bus, but the person sitting right next to you is big and snorlo. Unfortunately, you will have a lack of sleep day. In recent years, though, Japan's also seen a steady stream of low cost airline carriers popping up. For example, to fly from Sendai to Osaka costs as little as five thousand yen with Peach Airlines, far cheaper. Than、mm. by train and even by bus.、Good、and if、point. you still want to know if the Japan Rail Pass is worth it or not, you can use the Japan Rail Pass calculator on the Japan Guide's website, where you can input the length of time you're staying and your itinerary to get a rough idea of whether or not it's worth it. And if you want to save even、okay, more、stop. money, there's a LCC is a cheap tip, but there's a one thing you have to be careful about it. It is a distance. Japanese airports are usually located in suburb places from urban areas. You can see the table showing time consumptions on two public transportations from Tokyo to Osaka. 
As you can see, bullet trains can get to the destination faster than airplanes. And this calculation also has one or two hours of waiting time for taking airplanes. Furthermore, the charge of other transportation fees will be lifted for going to airports. If you don't want to consume every minute to save your budget and time by taking LCC, we suggest you might need to research beforehand. And if you want to save even more money, there's an even cheaper way than by travelling by bus. You can travel by skateboard. No, seriously, I'm not even trolling you. I know a guy who travelled all the way from Sapporo to Hiroshima on a skateboard. It took him 33 days and he saved oh, really? at least 5,000 yen, which is the cost of travelling by plane. Whoa. The only question that remains is, Pretty how good. budget are you willing to get? Yeah, I would have, I would have just flown it. He didn't explain about taxi, so I would like to tell you guys. Japanese taxi is the most expensive in terms of the public transportation in Asian countries. So, I don't recommend using it unless you're about to miss the airplane or in the case of the rush. In addition, you cannot use Grabs or Uber apps from your smartphone in Japan. So, please mind it when you come to Japan. The cheapest style of restaurant to eat out in Japan are the fast food restaurants. The three main ones are Skia, uh, Yoshinoya and Matsu, which can be found on most city streets across the country, and all of which sell the same style of rice bowl uh, dishes covered in so toppings, delicious. the most popular being gudon, which is thinly sliced beef. So we've got Very rice, popular. beef and three kinds of cheese, all for 490 yen, and without the cheese it's 350 yen, which is disturbingly cheap. Uh, it's not something yeah. you're going to write home to your family about, probably, but it is very filling. After you've mm. had this, the next six hours, you're sore. Also, it comes with Tabasco. Mm. This isn't product placement, it's not just Tabasco. Random, they give it to you with the bowl. I don't think they won't uh, give it to you it unless flavor. you ask for it. Although be careful, because you do get Tabasco all over your hands, and it does look like I've committed murder. <laughs> fast filling and without the same sense of guilt that comes from eating at a Western-style fast food restaurant, it's the ideal place to drop into for any budget traveller. Or uh, just people like me who are lazy and uh, can't be bothered to cook at home. Slightly healthier than Western fast food, although if you're like me uh, and you smother your food in three kinds of cheese, you are going to lose those, uh, those groundbreaking health benefits. So, yeah, good on. The fast food restaurants are very cheap and have a lot of varieties of menu. The most expensive one will be around 600 yen. So if you want to save the money, this is a very recommended place. By the way, Suki has a secret menu called King Size Gyudon, which is six times bigger than ordinal size. And the price surprisingly offers only 10 bucks. If you are eager to challenge it, why don't you? Another good cheap fast food option are the standing restaurants dotted around train stations, where you can order a bowl of soba or udon from the vending machines for as little as 400 yen. Mm -hmm. And if I'm in a hurry around lunchtime, I'll quickly dive in and grab a bowl of mushrooms. I was wondering, soda. he got the nice so chocolate well. He's but a very again, good. Even if you're a probably better than mine. Probably didn't come all the way to Japan just to eat a bowl of rice with three kinds of cheese for two weeks. Or maybe you did, but fortunately, there's a really easy way of saving money if you're going out. Uh, uh, there are a few Japanese words you really need to that know. Looks so nice. And one of those words is nomi hodai, which means all mm. you can drink. It's the holy grail of a cheap night out, where for around as little as 1200 yen, you can drink as much as you can from an extensive drink menu uh, for up to two hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello, God, we're so bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good for 1500 yen. You get all the alcohol you can drink and all the meat you can eat. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> it's, it's less of a barbecue, more of a just a, gen, a general fire. Mm. Some types of restaurants ah. also have tabi holder, all you can eat, particularly at Yakiniku grilled meat restaurants such as this one. I just be really careful who you leave right in charge of the barbecue. And it's food on fire. Literally on fire. Nice and roasted. <laughs> if you do some research online, finding bars and restaurants with nomi hodai is pretty easy to do. Okay, stop. Japanese people often use nomi hodai and tabe hodai too. If you're a heavy drinker and a big eater, don't forget about it. Except for yakiniku, there's a restaurant that you can eat like shabu shabu, sukiyaki, sushi, tempura, all kinds of Japanese foods. So if you're interested, check it out. And oh yeah, of course we have options for women. There are many restaurants that provide tabe hodai for sweets too.
If you're not a big drinker but still fancy a beer though, the cheapest place to buy alcohol is at the supermarket or convenience store. One really good thing about Japan is you can actually drink uh, alcohol out in public, which you can't do in the UK. Mm. Uh, so you can come in here, you can grab your uh, your, <laughs> your one cup. You can sake, drink in America too. Which is basically just a kind of a jam jar filled with cheap sake. And yeah. uh, go off down the park and have a bit of fun. Uh, that said, it's not that great, so probably avoid that unless it's your first time drinking sake because then you won't know you won't have anything to compare it to it's also a great place to pick up breakfast or lunch such as onigiri rice balls or cheap ready meals soba noodles 340 yen pretty, pretty cheap the perfect thing for like a picnic or a light snack mm -hmm. Finally, to give you a rough idea of the price of certain popular dishes, here's a full price breakdown with meals such as sushi and yakitori unsurprisingly being amongst the most expensive, and mm, wagyu beef yeah. being so expensive I didn't even bother putting it on the list. Okay, so, yeah, it is true that wagyu is surprisingly expensive. As he mentioned in the list, the average cost will be like this in Japan. Basically, it will be around 1000 to 2000 yen per person without drinking alcohol. But of course, if you go to expensive one, the cost will be a lot more expensive. By the way, there's other videos explaining how to eat cheaply in Japan in our channel. So please check it out if you're interested. I hope that this video will help you out for the people who are coming to Japan in the near future like this original video did. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this video and don't forget to subscribe to our channel too. See you soon! Bye bye!